Almost 30 years in Detroit television. He's been there, seen it, and done it all. News, good afternoon, Detroit. Kelly and Company. Friday morning, join us for a look back at nearly three decades of fun, favorite moments, and special memories. We're going to roast John, toast him, and surprise him with a whole bunch of guests from way back when. Don't miss a very special company when Channel 7... Regis and Kathy Lee are out of control on the next live. It's hard to believe that John and I have been hosting this show together for almost 17 years. And while our hopes were that we'd become a regular part of your day, I don't think either of us realized how much like family all of you at home would become. Those of you who grew up here in Detroit came to know both of us pretty well long before Kelly and Company even began. It was on the set of the evening news that many of you watched our partnership begin professionally. And those of you who really watched closely knew that it was also growing personally. It wasn't long before you got to know us even more intimately as we started each morning together on Kelly and Company. You were with us as we welcomed some of Hollywood's biggest names to our home here at Channel 7. And as we traveled to theirs, making appearances like this one on ABC's General Hospital. When we took our show on the road, you were there with us too, often traveling hundreds of miles to join us at SeaWorld or Disney World. Actually, there were probably times that we spent more time in your home than some of your family members, especially when we were hosting both Kelly and Company and Good Afternoon Detroit. Well, today marks the end of an era, as John moves on to spend a little more time doing some of the things he loves most. But we wouldn't dream of marking this moment without all of you, our early morning family, and without one last really big party. So stay with us as some of our favorite guests from throughout the years join the fun. a very, very different morning for all of us here at Channel 7. But I want you to meet the man of the hour, the guest this morning. That's different. John Kelly. I feel like I'm milking the applause. <laughs> I'm milking. Randy, my boy. Oh, Tula, that lovely, lovely letter. My God. Well, you're a surprise. <laughs> Woo! Hi, Shirley. Hello. Rascal. My friend. Jeffrey the Bailey. the first time in my life I've hugged more guys than women. Oh, <laughs> you're milking it. Huh? You're milking it. Well, you know, I haven't yeah. seen a lot of these people. Oh, wow. Isn't this different? Yeah. Gosh, yeah. it was different from the very first moment I woke up this morning. I got one of the old and chairs. And our producer over there is already crying. I know. We're down in a hole. I've asked for a pillow already. <laughs> now, we'll Bill's got them all in the <laughs> studio next door. Well, I'm getting this wrap up already. You okay, know we got to get on with the show. Yeah, you're crying again. Oh, of course, of course. I'm going to be crying throughout the whole show. I'll be okay. a mess by the time it's over. Anyway, you know, when everybody heard that you were leaving, this was going to be your farewell show. I hate to say that. But uh, we tried to figure out who's going to be on, and everybody started calling in and so on. And then we thought, well, we got the show pretty well set. Who is going to lead us off? Now, who is the most outspoken guest we've ever had? Who is the most asked? Four guests we've ever had. Jeffrey Bruce. Hi, there you're on, Jeffrey. Jeffrey Bruce. Oh. 
Good morning. Good morning. I was asked to start off the show to praise John Kelly. <laughs> the first time I did the show was 15 years ago. John and I looked at each, at each other. We had the same look in each other's eyes, the same thought. We thought, who the hell are you? <laughs> at the beginning, I was always like John's pickle, if you think about it. You go into a deli, you order a sandwich, you get the sandwich that you want, but there was always this little pickle next to it. You sort of like the pickle, it took some getting used to, but thanks to the guidance of John, I have become his little gherkin, and a proud one I am, John. <laughs> Loyalty is a quality <laughs> that is virtually unknown in this industry. This is probably the, the attribute that I most admire about John. What you see with John Kelly is definitely not what you get. He's quiet, refined, urbane, educated and deeply introspective all of the qualities that we don't necessarily equate with a talk show host so the question is how'd you get the job john i don't know uh, i won't say that john i won't say that john has a rather large ego but uh, i just had this vision of the world blowing up and everybody online to meet god and bill clinton goes up and says god I am Bill Clinton, I was President of the United States, and God says, my son, have a seat on my left. Hillary Roadkill Clinton comes up, says, and what do you do, my child? I was the First Lady of the United States, and God says, please have a seat on my right, my child. And who are you? My name is John Kelly, and I think you're sitting in my seat. Isn't <laughs> uh, that great? <laughs> so, <laughs> so, let us bid a fond farewell to John. His style, his manner, his joie de vivre, that laugh. Uh, <laughs> John is joining American Express. You may not know that. He's going to be handling the commercials, and the first celebrity that he signed up was John Wayne Babbitt. And uh, John Wayne Babbitt, excuse me. You know, don't leave home without it. Good choice. <laughs> <laughs> for years, for years we were used to having John in our bedroom or kitchen every morning. It just won't be the same. Marilyn will carry on. God knows she will. Uh, but even though John will be taking off his microphone, don't put anything past him. I have a feeling he'll be back with us very, very soon. And I personally will be the first to be in line to welcome him back. Lots of love, John, and thanks for everything. Thank you, Sal. I think, I think, John, you have our next guest lipstick right here, as a matter of fact. You know? <laughs> well, not up here. <laughs> well, you know, we've traveled over the years to uh, New York and L.A. doing the ABC soap a few times, as you well know. And with us this morning is somebody that knows a lot about the soaps and has a lot to say. Please welcome our good old friend, Linda Hirsch. I first came into the office and, and I saw John Kelly, this like, what, nine foot two man, smoking a pipe, looking at me like going, and what do you do? And I said, I talked about soaps, and he said, uh-huh, this is Marilyn's topic, and he walked out of the room. <laughs> <laughs> did I do that? Yes, you did. You did that. I guess. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, John, not you. No, well, no, John, I <laughs> Yeah, he did. And I used to be so intimidated by him, and every time he tried to, like, warm me up by saying, you know, if you're ever down in Hawaii, come to the condo. And I'd say, well, I'm coming to Hawaii next week. That's nice. <laughs> I, I, I don't think there is a condo. <laughs> but, um, but eight or nine years ago, John calls me up, and, and he and Marilyn were going to write a, a, an autobiography. And John said, do you want to ghost write this autobiography? And I said, oh, my God, what a great idea. And Marilyn would give me these wonderful stories, the most wonderful stories. And John would say, well, when I started broadcasting in 1701, <laughs> and he wouldn't say anything. And I'd say, Marilyn, he's not saying anything. She goes, oh, well, I know, but, you know, loosen him up. He couldn't loosen him up. So finally they got a person who could write and, and make up John's life. <laughs> yeah, you got out of it. <laughs> didn't have to deal with it. So I'm at a house sale one day in Ferndale not too long ago, 
Yeah, you know, I'm really sorry I never wrote that book because there it was sitting in the 10 cent bin. And I go, oh, God, I could have made a fortune. Now that's that. not nice. Oh, it was in the dollar bin. Right? Dollar, yeah. <laughs> it was in the 10 cent bin. I had to, uh, the other thing is that John and I worked on two shows together because I also worked on Good Afternoon Detroit because he thought, he goes, another show she's going to come in and do something I don't care about or understand. Isn't that great? But John was very necessary to that show because every day when I was in one place, he'd go and he'd look at the, um, he'd go out and he'd say, okay, so the so have the soft drinks arrived? And that would be just... <laughs> <laughs> I'm so bad at this, obviously. Linda, John, Linda, I got to tell you, they gave me this. Well, yeah, yeah, that. well, I got to ring it when you go over your time, and I thought you would go over. Right. <laughs> Look, John, you know, it's... it's no kidding. We, you and I would not have been doing this show. At least it wasn't not, a gong. <laughs> well, it, I, I know. Isn't that terrible? It's so rude, but I had to do it. I understand. Uh, who got us together on the show? You remember when the guy said to us, Bob, Bob Woodruff? Yeah. You know, you should get off the weather board, Marilyn, and mm -hmm. maybe you should do a talk show together, a man-wife talk show. First guy they'd ever he thought He didn't about. talk it over with me. <laughs> Executive yeah, producer yeah. of the station at that time, and now uh, program director of WOR in New York, our dear friend, yeah. you betcha, Bob Woodruff. Uh, I'm glad to see they have the same chairs we bought in 1960. <laughs> <laughs> Made a lot of progress over the years. <laughs> and I would like to thank uh, Kelly and company for the wonderful accommodations last night. <laughs> I'm sharing a bathroom with a, with a couple from Guam. I don't know. <laughs> a 57 Nash Rambler picked us up this morning and delivered us. Up. We had to walk from the parking lot. But other than that, so it's nice to see things haven't changed since 1978. <laughs> That's when we all got together. Um, that many years ago, I'll be a little serious for a second. In 1978, a lady named Jim, uh, Gene Finlater asked me to come out to Detroit and, and help them put together a great morning show. Not a good morning show, but a great one. And I tell you, uh, we started in 1978. Six months later, we were number one in the market, beating Donahue. And we were so proud. And let me tell you, I know we're running late. This has been a great experience for me because this is where I remember the roots of us really doing good talk. And they're the best in the business. And John, thank you so much. Oh, thank Goodbye. you, God, it's great to see everybody again, oh, isn't God. it? It's yeah, just, just it's really wonderful. Is. They've all gotten older, and I'm just the same. Oh, of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> well, if you've been thinking and wondering what John's going to be doing in the future, Dennis Fairchild has some ideas. Uh, Ready for this? Yes. We'll be back in a moment. Oh, after this. We're doing commercials. Hi, John. I'd just like to say thanks. You, uh... Gave me my first break on television about 15 or 16 years ago. You gave me a chance. You let me uh, eventually host Kelly and Company. And uh, you always gave me a lot of confidence and always made me feel at home there at Channel 7. Good luck to you and yours, and uh, I'm sure I'll see you soon. Well, I had this dream that, that, that you decided to leave Kelly and company what? And, and fly what? off to Hawaii and sell conch shells. What? On the beach. Conch shells on the beach? Yeah. Well, I'm glad to hear at least oh. you'd miss me, honey. Oh, no, no, that wasn't it. What? No, the terrible part was that you woke me up before I could call Tom Selleck and replace you. <laughs> Did you do that? <laughs> Believe me, in my dreams, right? Believe yeah. me. Okay, Dennis Fairchild has been predicting futures for many of the people around here for a long time, and he's going to predict some things for you. Dennis? <laughs> John Kelly is born under the zodiac sign of Libra, the scales of justice, and in Chinese astrology, he's known as a rabbit. Libras, they like things elegant, they like to spend money, they like nice things, and rabbits like to thump around. So when you blend that all together, this might be the kind of guy that if you can't get a roll in the hay, then a roll of money in a pan, or maybe an onion roll with some good Gouda cheese might just do. I looked into the astrological meanings for the 1995 and 4 predictions for John, 
and due to a fortuitous conjunction in his house of friends, we're still going to be seeing him for the next several months, maybe not at 9 a.m., and he's not going to be sitting there drinking Perrier and Geritol at all. I, I closed my eyes and said, tell me some meaning of what John might be doing for us this autumn, and I saw him in one hand carrying beef jerkies, and in the other hand carrying a box of no-dos, sitting in front of a typewriter. We're going to be seeing a lot more of John on print, rather than just seeing him on the tube as the autumn comes up according to the stars. And in my closing meditation, I said, please, give me an image I can share with John. I saw him trekking through the Brazilian rainforest in his safari garb. And he had these little barbed seeds that caught his safari pants as he walked in. And less than an hour later, they had sprouted these live vines and flowers. So metaphorically speaking, John, there's a lot of fertile ground up ahead of you and lots of good successes. And as your favorite astrologer says, if at first you don't succeed, change your definition of success and always <laughs> take more. <laughs> Thanks, 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 Thank you, John. <laughs> well, you know, Kelly. What's Kelly, next? Well, well, a good friend of ours, little boy. Our, our little boy, mm. not really. I offered to adopt him, though. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you too. But he didn't, he he didn't go for the for idea. He was holding more money. Yeah. Right. Well, if Bob Woodruff brought us together, and this producer, Dan Weaver, certainly did a great deal to make Kelly and Company the number one local talk show in the country, I'd like you to welcome Dan Weaver. <laughs> You're a hell of a lot better at this than I am, but <laughs> there's a reason why I've been behind camera all these years. I did some tabulating last night, and you have posted over 5,500 hours of telling something. I think that's pretty amazing, don't you? That's, that's a half a million minutes of airtime. I think that's pretty amazing. God's given you an incredible gift, uh, whether it's been introducing 30,000 guests here on the Kelly and Company stage, or playing opposite Erica on All My Children, <laughs> <laughs> or being upstage by Shamu at SeaWorld. <laughs> the early years at, uh, at Kelly and Company were really very, very special with me, with, with uh, Woody and Randy, Nancy, and uh, Barb, Marilyn. It really meant a lot to me, and I, I think that um, if Webster when Webster defined friend and host, he had you in mind because you created a family here and you have, you've been like a, a father to me. And I'm really, I'm just so thrilled that I was a part of all this. Um, you've always had a special place in my heart and I'm a little nervous right now. It's hard for me sometimes to put my words, uh, to put things into words. Uh, I've always had that problem. You've never had that problem. And there's one other person who didn't have that, who doesn't have that problem. That's Larry Santos. About 10 years ago, we were producing a, an anniversary show. Ellen, Brad, and Jill, and Cinca. And we called uh, Larry and asked him if he would put together uh, some of the words that kind of describe what it was like for us to work in Kelly and Company. And so after he beautifully did that, we went through the Kelly and Company archives and we picked some of our favorite moments. They're moments that stand out in my mind as some of my most favorite moments on television. I thank you for that gift, and I think that on, on this special occasion, it's, uh, it's a nice time to dust off that tape and show it to you one more time. This is for you, John. We love you. Oh, God. <laughs> Thank you. 
make a wreck out of the old guy, oh. I guess this is called. It's Alan Kennedy and Brad, Brad Hurtado. Hurtado. Come on up here, please. Come here, guys. Please. Just take a bow. Just stand up, take a bow. Yeah. Two producers. Two of the most, most creative people here. around. That's right. What's that crummy show you're working on now, Brad? Donahue, Donahue, that's what it is. Yeah. Donahue, I tell you, they all do really good when they leave here. They don't come back except, here. Except Dan. I think Dan changed his jobs more than I change well, underwear. He's be <laughs> he's be of course, that's not too often. <laughs> he's between talk shows right now. Okay. H Geraldo between and, and Donahue. Also, oh, okay. We're going to come back. If I can stop crying, this is really something. We're going to come back and we're going to heat up the Kelly and Company kitchen with a lot of chefs. We'll be back. John, I just heard that you were leaving. I find it almost unbelievable that after all of this time and so many incredible hours of information and entertainment that you have decided to hang up that microphone. I wish you the best because you certainly deserve all the good things that are going to be coming your way. Congratulations. Hi, John. It's Stretch. So this is your swan song. Well, I remember the glory days when you commanded attention in the newsroom. Ever the diligent newsman, you departed because television news was getting too soft, too watered down, not serious enough. But I've noticed, John, since you left, you've interviewed 137,000 wretched cross-dressing psychics. Now, what do you see in those Chippendales anyway? And you've profiled <laughs> hundreds of people who sued their hairdressers, and I think you've reached a record for makeovers of men, women, and their pets. But... You have been a great mentor. And if there's one thing I learned from you, it's to make sure that I, I'm always sitting on the right number of pillows so that my co-anchor is always shorter than me. And if I steal my co-anchor's lead-in, always claim innocence, and never let him get a word in edgewise. In all sincerity, have a glorious retirement. Ride off into the sunset on one of your favorite horses and be happy knowing you've been one of the great contributors to our industry. You and Edward R. Murrow were close friends, weren't you? She giveth and she taketh away. Oh, wasn't that great? We got to rush along. We're naturally fighting the clock here. I think we're five minutes long now already. Now it's six. We're well, talking. okay, okay. Well, I think everybody knows that kitchen is not my favorite room in the house, right? <laughs> and nobody would ever let me do cooking shows with our cooking people. But one that I always really worried about and wondered about, there was something going on between you and Maria Ong. Really? You always loved her, and you always said, oh, I want to do Maria Ong. Maria Ong, come on up here. Maybe we'll find out. <laughs> ah! Look. Ah! <laughs> well, she said, cut it short. Cut it short? Cut you it short. Cut it short. <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Bobbitt. Okay. <laughs> to Denver. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. On a recent flight to Denver, about three weeks ago, a Kelly viewer asked me, what was it like when John Kelly kissed you? That was years ago. I said, you remember that? I said, it was simply delicious. <laughs> and she swooned and said, gee, you're so lucky you got to be kissed by the host. I said, yes, that's true. But looking back, it was in 1981 when John Kelly welcomed me into his kitchen. Gracious host as he was, made me feel at home right away. Gave me full reign of the kitchen sink, the stove, the pantry. And I thought to myself, typical male, expected me to cook. <laughs> no, 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 no. I brought the cleaver and I said, John, you mince the garlic while I bone the chicken. He pureed the parsnips while I prepared the roast. He stir fried so I can fix his crooked tie. And then he drank the sake, thinking it was water, because the Szechuan peppercorn gave him a tickle. <laughs> I bet I was the first woman who ever made him cry over spiked water. <laughs> okay. Uh -huh. What a team we were. Yeah. We... I'm gonna cry. No, I'm not gonna cry. I'm just gonna give you <laughs> a gift. Okay? Here's a cleaver for you to chop kindling with. A few peppers to liven up your chili. Oh. And this is my wish for John. May you have sun-filled days for horseback riding and moonlit nights to go walking with Marilyn. I love you. Thank you.
also oh. one of the funniest people I've ever known in my life. Yes, she, she gets on a roll. She, okay, we've got to hurry. Sure. Gotta hurry. Well, another uh, guest that we used to have on a lot, and we still do, as a matter of fact, is Tom McKinney. You never knew what was going to happen backstage neither did or on the set, and neither did he. Tom McKinnon. <laughs> No more, Mr. Nice Guy. Oh. <laughs> I love you guys. I have a little poem, and I had some help with this poem. By remember that gal? Uh, she's a bartender that blew grapes in the air. Yes, yes, I sir. Well, Marie did. helped us with yes. this one. So let me start. Okay, Tom. Well, <laughs> we met in the early '80s when I was oh so young. The thought of TV cooking seemed like so much fun. Good afternoon, Detroit. With John and Marilyn had such appeal. So I jumped at the, on the wagon, because it was such a deal. He gave us 50 bucks, after all. <laughs> for three years, I cooked for you. The fires, they were few. I still can't figure out why we are dumped for Donahue. <laughs> Kel Kelly and his company then joined the local waves. You often called me in to cook up the latest craze. For years, you were so popular, you gave us such a jolt. And now you're better half to pick that up, and she's stolen it by the bolt. <laughs> 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 By the way, your Marilyn, through the years, has shown absolutely nowhere. Why don't you talk to her about Sammy Donut Head? <laughs> You're ready to retire and ride into the sunset red. There is a silver lining right there on your head. <laughs> John, you're such a cowboy. You have those locks of gray. I've made this little memento. And by the way, the hair won't pull away. Oh. <laughs> and made by Tom McKinnon. Oh, one, one more thing, John. I guess I should do a blatant advertisement. You've, um, you've had me on your show so many years. I think it's like 13 years now yeah. cooking. And I have to invite you on my show. <laughs> Which is on another station, Channel 4, by the way. <laughs> oh! -ho. It's called Gourmet on the Goats on Fridays at noon. I hope to see you there, John, and good luck with everything. Thank you, Tom, pal. Thank you. <laughs> Another one of the good guys. Oh, I know. We're getting the sign. Are we late? Well, when we come back, gossip a columnist Shirley Eater's got a lot to say about Shirley. us because she knew us way back when we were dating. I wonder what she's going to drag up. Well, we'll be right back. Hey, John, let us give you some advice on your retirement. Yeah, enjoy it. We understand you and Marilyn used to have a vacation home here in Hawaii. You should come back. Come on, John, everybody in Detroit's going to miss you. We wish you good luck and congratulations, John. Michigan's opponent Saturday, Texas A&M 5th. Now, the AP has Ohio State 6th and Colorado 7th, with UPI reversing the two. Oh, that's long. That's <laughs> there is no way... And I can offer you an explanation <laughs> for the hideous <laughs> which you saw. No. If I said to say, never assume a camera is a dead camera. <laughs> never. Is that all you want to say, Jim? You believe me, did that? I tell you. Sometimes I think I was the only guy in the world that could, that could break up Le Goff so bad. <laughs> well, Shirley Eater, come on over here. What have you been hiding from me? You know, I want to tell you something. I came here Monday by mistake. <laughs> and they said, don't let John see you get out. I was thrown out. Uh, and I had to get out because I had parked in the boss's spot anyway under the shed. <laughs> anyway, John, you know, we talked for a while. And he said, what are you doing here? What are you doing here? You, they had a psychic show, one of those cross dresses, you know. Like, and, and you know that I honestly said to him, well, I was in the neighborhood, and I think he bought it. It's an isolated building, <laughs> and, I, and I'm in the neighborhood. But it's nice to grow old at the same time with, you know, all of us. We are growing old. You don't look at those. Oh, well, thank you. And I don't know I the color it. of my hair underneath, <laughs> so I... <laughs> we forgot. Anyway, let me tell you something. I work with John and Marilyn. We all grew up together on Channel 2, right? Mm -hmm, right. And it was nice. It really it was like a family. Mm -hmm. Really like a family. When we started here, we were like a family, too. What happened to that family? Like all families, it's dysfunctional. 
But, you know, <laughs> when, sooner or later. I don't know how, I swear, I don't know how to really roast people. I don't. When I go on Joan Rivers, she says, and now I want you to meet my good friend, the Maria Osmond of Columbus. That's an insult. <laughs> it's an insult. Anyway, John, I know we're going to hurry up. This is not from me, and this is why I took it, and I think this is very nice. I can't knock you. Oh, except one thing, the laugh. But you can't knock the laugh because David Letterman is making millions of dollars with sure. you. And you sure. Sure. Now you ought to go get that job, okay? Oh, yeah, right. But I'm not, you can't, you know you never can get me off. I, it's the only place I can keep going. Play the theme. Get the right, hook. No, it's Shirley. I something to say. Okay, she's got to read. Shirley. Yes, it's about you. Okay. And it's lovely, honestly. Judge Roman S. Gribbs, who is mayor of this city. Great, great, great. I had lunch with him at the tennis club last Sunday. Edward and I had lunch with him. And I, he said, I told him I was coming here for you. And you know something? I've got to tell you what he said. He said, you know, I enjoyed news on WJBK because John Kelly interviewed me. He enjoyed, I really did because... He knew he was in, in, what is this now? I wrote it and I can't read it. He, that he said that you had a good grasp of city problems. You had an excellent grasp of the city. And it was comfortable being with you because you knew what you were talking about. That's John, a nice thing to say. I thought you didn't mind. No. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Shirley. That was sweet thing. Thank you, there. Yeah. We have to keep that going. Yeah. Time. Well, you know, there were times when John and I, uh, in the 80s, uh, didn't know where we lived. We thought we lived here at Broadcast House because we were doing Kelly and Company. And then with two hours off or three hours off, right into intros to G a Good Afternoon Detroit, or GAD, as we called it. And I want you to meet one of the producers. He was the executive producer of GAD, Randy Barone. Yes. Yeah. I should mention you are now the producer of Good Morning America. Yes, yeah. John, like, uh, like Dan, I think uh, probably we're better suited behind the camera than in front of the camera. Mm -hmm. uh, but I did have the uh, wonderful experience of working with both John and Marilyn over many, many years. Besides Good Afternoon Detroit, I really came out here with, uh, with Dan and Bob to get Kelly and Company yeah, going. Yeah. And I think that's where some of my fondest memories are still rooted today in those times that we spent together. And looking at the, uh, the tape that we were looking at before and seeing all those moments, and I think there are a lot of people out here that don't realize that uh, the enormous success of Kelly and Company and what impact we had on other programs like the Kelly's Quiz. I know you can, everybody, you can still see it on one of the syndicated yeah. shows that's very popular right now. A wedding, a yearly wedding. Gee, what a concept. I remember mm -hmm. the day that we thought of that, yeah. doing that the yeah. very first time, sitting in the office all together. And, uh, and now it's a, uh, a yearly thing on Regis's show. So it, I guess if, uh, imitati if uh, imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, we should be very, very flattered. Uh, I guess as far as uh, those memories are concerned, there are a lot of people that uh, come to mind as far as uh, people who tried to copy us and never could. Uh, there are those moments of uh, people who, uh, those guests that didn't show up. Do you remember <laughs> some of those, oh. those moments? Uh, one Still of the happening. big stars of Evening Shade right now, I'll never forget, uh, didn't want to come and do the show in the morning, and she finally arrived after much, much uh, prodding, and she showed up looking like an unmade bed. And you and Bob and Harvey had to save me from having my face I bashed I thought you were going to duke it out that night. Yeah. Yes, we won't tough. tell them who it was or will we? Well, very popular no, but now. she's got a southern accent. She's broad in a beam. Now, who could that be? Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, I guess I knew the show was a success when we finally got a large office, and John and Marilyn had their own separate offices. Equal size, I'll have you know. Yes. Marilyn made sure of that she had the measuring <laughs> tape out to make sure of that. Women's and, then. and the other fun memory is these two fighting in the uh -huh. office. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And whenever they would start fighting, all of us producers would put the newspapers up in front of our face and dodge behind it. And then Bob Woodruff would walk in and he would say to you all, listen, if you're going to divorce, would you please mm -hmm. wait until a major rating period? <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, John, if I have any success today, so much of it is rooted oh. right here in Detroit with you and Marilyn. We just love I, lo you. You I love you that, both. Randy. Thank you, pal.
Just gotta take a break. I think right we're taking now. it right now. We'll be right back. Oh. guests have gotten you out of hot water a lot of times. Let's start with Chef Larry James. Oh. Hey, Dad. Larry. Dad, oh. I thought this was a roast. <laughs> but if you don't have enough time, so hell, do it yourself. <laughs> Jeez. I don't know. We've been together a long time. Yes, since we have. Dad, since all that wonderful kind of fun stuff. I had hair at one time. Okay, do you remember that? <laughs> sure you do. Okay, those were the real old days and everything like that. I could go on and on and on, but I want to make sure everybody gets a chance to talk and say, John, how much we love you here in Detroit. Congratulations. Thank you, John. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Of course. Chopping peppers. Yes, go ahead. <laughs> Our old friend Tula Patalis. Oh, Rob, God love her. Yes. Come, Tula. Oh. <laughs> the garlic is locked. Hey, listen. I figure after about 750 cooking shows, we should make this guy a master chef. So we have a new. Oh, you have. Oh, there it is. And he really screwed it's up with the name on it. Yep. Yes. He and brought in the garlic queen once. This delightful 82-year-old lady stole the show. I couldn't get my segment in because she cooked away, and, and John and I just sat aside, so I'm going to crown him the garlic king. <laughs> and this chef's hat is for the time he almost barfed in my cream of asparagus <laughs> soup. I remember that. He said he hated it. That was just a put-on, Tula. Well, let's John, get hair and makeup. I love you, and I love Thank being you, on Kelly and Company, and I, we just don't know what it'll be without you. Uh, Marilyn, I hope oh. you invite us back to do oh, some healthy you cooking. Thank you, too. Thank you, too. We'll right I'm going to take up your offer. <laughs> anything without a good friend of ours, Sylvia Glover. Good afternoon, uh, Detroit yes. Shopper. <laughs> I know we're running out of time. I, they usually leave me for the last <laughs> minute. Um, I'm one of the newer kids on the block. I wasn't with Kelly and Company, but I was the, um, <clears throat> the next generation was Good Afternoon Detroit. We stopped till we dropped, and we had a lot of fun. Uh, not too many, well, we've had so many memories. We need three hours for memories, but one thing I, I want you to know that when I occasionally would co-host the show with you, and Marilyn might be off, um, again, I was the new kid on the block, and he wanted to kind of loosen me up and see if I could lose my composure. So you remember this? You used to tickle my leg all the time, so I would try to laugh. <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> and there's another memory. We did the, um, the uh, mini Grand Prix, yeah. and we, we always laugh. And I just want to say this, you know, uh, you who watched these two for years, it looks so easy because they make it look easy. And the thing that I learned from both of you, you're two of the best pros that I've ever met, and you taught me an awful lot. And I know you're going to be just fine. And we're going to miss you. Thanks. And I'm going to no, no cares. <laughs> well, through our love of animals, John and I made a lot of friends, and I'm sure that um, we're going to you're going to enjoy seeing this guy again. We haven't seen him for a long time. David Wills, the former executive of the Michigan Humane Society, and now head of investigation for the Humane Society of the United States. Well, I'll cut it short, too. I don't have a lot to say. I, uh, I ride with John Kelly. I don't know a lot about media and TV. John Kelly's my friend. He means a great deal to me, and I want to tell you something. I care a great deal about animals and how they are in this world, and these two people have saved more lives and been there more times for those animals in need than anybody you know. And uh, I don't ever worry about Kelly. He'll do just fine. And I love Marilyn, and I love John, and I'm just glad to be and here. And you're going to cry. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, buddy. Come here. 
and he's leaving for Alaska in two hours. I see you after. I mean, he's a documentary in himself. Oh, oh he goes all over the world. All over the world. There's a lot of investigation. Yeah. Humane Society of the United States. Right. Well, I think we're going to take another break. Is that right? There's a surprise. They're not even looking at me. I guess There's we can right. talk on. Anybody got anything you want to talk Take a break, about? Charlie. Take a break. We'll be right back. Okay. Why not? <laughs> Time passes quickly, and it's hard to believe that Detroit has been waking up to Good Morning America. And you, John, for almost 17 years, you've been around as long as Joan. Thanks. <laughs> Detroiters are certainly going to miss you, but I imagine you're not going to miss getting up that early oh. in the morning. So we just want to say, good, good luck, luck, John. John. You know, John, I couldn't be here today because Steph and I are walking on the beach, but I can tell you as the waves are rolling in, we're thinking about you. And the other, the other time that I was on, last time I was on, when I walked off, I said to you, you know, John, you're not a very good psychologist because we had been doing some kind of show where somebody called in, and you said to that person, you are so lucky to be rid of that guy. And with your typical honesty, you just hit it right on the head. So I said, John, you're not a very good psychologist, because psychologists aren't supposed to be that honest with the client. And over time, I've been thinking about it the past couple of weeks. And I realized that, you know, because you are such a good psychologist, you recognize inherently the doctor sex that was in me. And back when we did Good Afternoon Detroit, even though you didn't say it on the air, I can still remember your voice resounding through the studio. Here comes Dirty Andy again. It's <laughs> Dr. Sex taking the air. And I'd always think, Dr. Sex is taking the air. And these days, I've matured a little bit. And I'm not Dr. Sex anymore. I'm too old for that kind of stuff. But I'm Dr. Love and Human Relationships. And every time somebody says to me, aren't you Dr. Sex? I think, thank you, John Kelly. You've been a great help to me. Thank you so much. Well, we're nearly to the end of the show, and I know you're going to take over and say a few words. But before you do, I have something for you. Now, this is from the city of Farmington Hills, and they have proclaimed March the 4th, 1994, as John Kelly Day. Can I get a ticket fix? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Maybe get a free haircut. That's great. Maybe get a free haircut. Okay. That's, Isn't I'll nice? read it, yeah, okay, a little bit later. That, you know, there's okay. something else oh. here. And this is from That's near great. Dennis Archer's office. And this is a proclamation for all the years serving the Detroit metropolitan area. He's another alumni. Yes, he uh, is. He used to be a regular. Good afternoon, Detroit. Yeah. Good afternoon, Detroit. Okay, darling, it's all yours. Take the podium. Okay. How much time we got, Charlie? Two minutes. Okay. There are people in the studio next door because uh, we couldn't get everybody in here for this show who came to be here this morning. It was a huge, huge group. And uh, I'm going to stop over and see them after we get off the air. The, I look around this studio and I see so many wonderful friends. Harriet Rotter, who's done our show so many times. And uh, then there's people that you probably don't know about. My good friend Jim Myers over here, who uh, led me right through up to being a black belt. And uh, my, oh, you probably didn't see the cowboy over there, Tom Davis, who uh, taught me what horses really were and for which I will be eternally grateful. And he's here this morning. And so many others, good friends from Canada. Over here, people who have just been friends, because we have so many friends that mm -hmm. aren't on the air people. And then, just faces out here who have been in our audience time and time again, who have shown their support just by showing up. You didn't have the pleasure that we did of hearing a song sung during one of the commercials. It was just for me, and it was a cappella, and it was right on the button, and right on key and all the mail and all the things that have come over the years uh, it's something for which I will be eternally grateful as well as the opportunity that Bob Woodruff gave many years ago in encouraging us to do the show our stage manager oh uh, Chuck <laughs> oh Chuck Professor Charles Deary who's been with us through thick and thin 
bad timing and good, and who's holding a card right now that says 30 seconds, and it's almost gone. Now it's down to 15. The young woman who produced this show today, she had oh, the world's worst time pulling it together, but as usual, she came through. Lori Weiss did a hell of a job. Ralph Cash is standing over there saying, don't I have a time to tell a joke? Sorry, Ralph. But to do it on another show with Marilyn and somebody else. Thank you for being there all those years. Thank you. And I'll see you. That's it. I love you, man. Clothing for Marilyn Turner is provided by Episode, international designer fashions for women at the Somerset Collection in Troy. Clothing for John Kelly is provided by Graham and Gunn at the Somerset Collection in Troy. Hairstyles and makeup for Marilyn Turner and guests of company are provided by Robin Minugian of About Face, located at Palazzolo Salon in downtown Royal Oak. A transcript of this program is available for $7 through SOS Transcripts. Call 1-800-553-7717. That's 1-800-553-7717. incredible career this morning here at Channel 7. It's hard to believe that John and I have been hosting this show together for almost 17 years. And while our hopes were that we'd become a regular part of your day, I don't think either of us realized how much like family all of you at home would become. John Kelly hosted his final edition of Company this morning. It was originally called Kelly and Company when it first went on the air back in the 1970s. Today's farewell was Sometimes sweet, sometimes sad, and sometimes funny. What you see with John Kelly is definitely not what you get. He's quiet, refined, urbane, educated, and deeply introspective. All of the qualities that we don't necessarily equate with a talk show host. So the question is, how'd you get the job, John? I don't know. <laughs> uh, 